Hey everyone, it's Janice from the Indianola Public Library. I have another group of books that you may have missed over the past couple of months, and I think you're definitely going to want to give these a try. They're all tales of survival. Exciting, scary, and maybe a little gross sometimes. We start in the desert with my first book. It's called 96 Miles, and it's written by J.L. Esplin. The Lockwood brothers are supposed to be able to survive anything. Since their mother died, 13-year-old John Lockwood and his 11-year-old brother Stuart live in a remote area of the Nevada desert with their father, who's an avid survivalist, and he's always insisted that his boys be prepared for the worst. But a perfect storm of events leads John and Stu left home alone during the worst blackout the country has ever known. No one knows what caused it, but the Lockwood brothers thought they had everything needed to survive. Their dad had a huge supply stash, so they should have been fine. However, when we first meet the brothers, they're collecting water out of toilets to drink since they got robbed and their whole stash is gone. They're forced to walk 96 miles in the punishing desert heat and wind to get help. And along the way, they meet a brother and sister named Cleverly and Will in an abandoned trailer while they're scavenging for water. Together, the four kids must endure exhaustion, dehydration, and each other if they hope to survive. This book is filled with survival techniques and danger and overcoming realistic obstacles. It's an exciting combination. I think you should check it out. From the hot, burning desert to the frigid wilderness of Canada, we go to our next book. It's called Dog Driven, and it's written by Terry Lynn Johnson. A dog sled race in the Canadian wilderness, and it's a race that 14-year-old McKenna doesn't even know if she can see to run. She's about to embark on a dangerous mission to deliver a letter from her younger sister Emma to the Foundation for Fighting Blindness. Why is it dangerous? Because McKenna has entered a dog sled race that follows the Great Superior Mail Run that extends north through Ontario, taking its travelers along and over frozen Lake Superior and over treacherous mountain terrain. McKenna's parents don't know that McKenna, like her little sister Emma, has the incurable disease Stargardt, which is what's blinded her sister. McKenna's vision is failing now, too. On her first day out of the dog sled race, she befriends another teen, Guy, who's actually become the eyes for his blind lead dog, and the pair supports each other along the three-day race. But can McKenna stay safe when she's faced with icy wind and weather, harrowing adventures, and what seem like never-ending obstacles on the trail, all while she's fighting to keep her vision? It's another exciting survival book that I think you should check out. And our next survival story takes us to the swamps of Florida. It's called Beast Face to Face with the Florida Bigfoot, and it's written by Watt Key. Adam Parks remembers seeing something in the road that night, but despite the policeman's suggestion, it definitely was not a bear. An accident on a forested Florida road late at night leaves Adam in the hospital and his parents missing. Adam saw what his father swerved to avoid, but he can't believe it. It was a massive, man-like beast. He tells the police, which leads to a newspaper article being written about him and what he says he saw, but the official search for his parents is fruitless. Still, Adam can't stop thinking about both the car accident and the beast. When he's sent to live with his reclusive uncle, which means a new school for Adam, he's suspended on his first day for fighting because of that newspaper article. 
as the police and his new classmates and the whole community question Adam about this swamp ape he claims he saw, he discovers a community of people who describe sightings of a similar creature. Now, Adam's a hunter, and he's comfortable in the outdoors, so he equips himself with supplies and a stolen boat and heads into the black snake and alligator-infested wilderness to find answers. It's a harrowing trek, and he nears starvation while he's out there. But then Adam discovers the terrifying truth behind the legends. This one actually has a little bit of gross in it so just be aware of that but it's so exciting and it's such a great book I think you should definitely check it out and for our next set of books we turn from legend to true life survival these next two books are based on real life experiences during World War II the first one is called Nazi prison camp escape and it's the first in a new series of Great Escapes. This one is by Michael Bergen. It's the tale of a real-life pilot's many attempts to escape from a German prisoner of war camp during World War II. Bill Ash, who's from Texas, is so eager to fight the Nazis that he couldn't wait for America. Instead, more than a year before the United States joins the war, Bill goes to Canada and enlists in the Royal Air Force. He loves being a Spitfire pilot, but he's soon shot down in France, and then after some time in hiding, he is sent to a POW camp. Now, POWs are treated better than Nazi prisoners in concentration camps or in the death camps, but... That does not mean that Bill is content to stay in prison. He's desperate to get back to the fighting, so he unsuccessfully attempts to escape time and time and time again. Attempts that range from a mad dash during a work detail to a pretty gross tale of digging a tunnel underneath the latrines. This is an exciting tale of a true life World War II prison camp escape. And my second World War II survival story is called Winter in Wartime, and it's by Jan Terlow. When the German army invaded the Netherlands and Belgium, Mikhail was 11. He thought war would be exciting, and he hoped it would last a long time. But now... In the winter of 1944, he's 15, and he wishes the war would end. The son of the mayor of a rural village, Mikhail knows how to keep a secret. He's no longer able to attend school, so he runs errands on his bicycle, avoiding Allied bombers and German soldiers alike. He also listens with pride to his Uncle Ben's stories of resistance work. When Mikhail's neighbor is captured by the Nazis, he becomes responsible for more secrets than he thought possible. As winter stretches on and Mikhail strives to do the right thing, his already risky mission turns life-threatening. These are great stories about World War II survival. I think you should check them out. And finally, we'll end with a little fun with these thrifty guides to surviving time travel. They are written by Jonathan W. Stokes, and there are four of them. If you had a time travel machine and could take a vacation anywhere in history, these are the only guidebooks you would need. There's four books in the series so far, and they cover the issues you might encounter as you travel through time. So... Explore your legal options if you're fed to the lions at the Colosseum in ancient Rome. Or find out what to do if you're being attacked by an army of one million Persians in ancient Greece. Learn how to survive a witch trial during medieval times and maybe get some tips on joining the Boston Tea Party without ending up in a British prison during the American Revolution. And throughout the whole series, you'll get all kinds of nifty pointers on how to avoid being poisoned or beheaded 
or torn apart by an angry mob. It's the greatest travel guide in all of history. You should come in and check them out. So those are the tales of survival that I have for you this week. Come in and check out some of these books. Check out some of the other great books that we have here at the library. We hope to see you soon. We open at noon on Monday through Saturday, and then we uh, close at our regular times. So come in and see us, and we will see you soon. Bye!